ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the tale I'm about to tell is called The Marriage of Sir Gawain. It is one of a series of tales and poems um, which is called the Loth based on the Lothly Lady. And we'll discuss her as we go along. The original of this tale was in poetry. I will tell it as a prose piece. It was a time when magic still roamed the land in, in the British Isles. And Arthur ruled from Camelot with his Knights of the Round Table. It was coming on Christmas tide, and everybody had gathered back to Camelot from their summer adventures for the great Christmas feast. The Arthur and the Court celebrated every year. There was merriment in the halls. The knights were telling of great deeds. The women were telling of births and deaths and other goings on. And Arthur, as was his wont, had vowed not to sit down to the feast until he was told of a great venture or had one himself. And the days rolled on towards the day of Christmas, and no one had come forward with a great tale or a deed for him to accomplish until the week before Christmas, the story of a great stag roaming in the woods outside of Camelot came to his ear. And he determined that a hunt would be launched to capture this stag, and perhaps serve it up at the feast. So the morning before Christmas Day, all the knights of the round table, all the huntsmen, all the dogs were gathered in the courtyard of the castle, preparing to go on the hunt. The dogs were barking, the huntsmen were calling to their dogs, the hounds were, the horns were sounding, and the horses were neighing as men got up on their horses, had a cup to set off before they set off into the woods. All day they rode, and yet no great stag was found. They found other stags and brought them down. They found birds and brought them down, but no great stag. And as the sun started to settle in the west, they all gathered together and started riding home. And suddenly, with a great crash, right out in front of Arthur, as he was at the head of the parade, a huge, magnificent stag leaped out of the bushes and set off through the woods. Well, everybody, of course, set off after it. And they went crashing through the woods and got separated. And as they got separated, it started to snow, and a fog seemed to come up out of the ground. And Arthur found himself riding alone, suddenly. But he could still see the stag out in front of him. And he could hear his knights around him, but he couldn't see them through the fog. And suddenly the stag turned at bay, and Arthur reined his horse to, and drew his bow, and the stag turned into a giant man, carrying a huge club. And Arthur stopped, startled. And the man said, The folk of this wood ruled here for many years before the humans came. And I have a challenge for you. Otherwise, we will turn ourselves loose upon your kingdom and destroy it forever. Well, Arthur looked about him, and he was alone. He had his sword, of course, and his bow. But this was a giant of a man with a big club. And he said, very well, I will accept your challenge. And the man said, you must return here within a year and a day and tell me what every woman wants in her marriage. And Arthur was, well, I accepted the challenge. Very well, I will return in a year and a day. And, but if I don't have, I, he turned to, before he wrote off, he turned to him and said, what if I cannot find out what you feel answers the question. He says, then doom will fall upon Camelot and all who dwell with So Arthur rode back, and as he rode back, the fog seemed to dissipate, and indeed all the knights came together. But so as Arthur rode back to, town, back to Camelot, he was very quiet, thinking about what he would do about this challenge. 
Well, the next day at feast, he was still very quiet. Sir Gawain, being an artful young man, noticed that while everybody else was singing and dancing, Arthur was sitting quietly at table. And he came to him and he said, My king, after the hunt yesterday, you seem to be very quiet. And Arthur said, Yes, I have. I have accepted a challenge that I must answer, or we are all doomed. Gwen said, well, may I help? And so Arthur told him the story of what had happened. And Gwen said, well, let me ride through the land and ask everybody. You can't leave Camelot. They would notice if you were gone. But I, I can ride through Camelot, through the, all the, of your kingdoms, and perhaps I can find an answer. So indeed, the next day, Gwen set off, and he asked everybody. He asked the low and the high, and he got answers like money, love, sex. <laughs> but none of them quite seemed to be what this giant of a man in the woods would have to look for. So he returned again just before Christmas tide. When Arthur asked him, he said, I have many answers, but I just they just don't seem right. And Arthur said, Well, the day after Christmas we must ride back into the woods answer the challenge. So they did. They mounted up by themselves and rode into the woods. And again, a great fog seemed to come up as they rode. And suddenly they heard bells and saw some lights off in the distance. And they rode towards that because often the fairies dance in the woods. And they thought, well, maybe the fairies would have an answer. And they came to a great sp open space in the woods, and sitting on the stump was this ugly old woman, all crouched over. And they turned to ride away, and she said, wait, I believe I have an answer for you that the giant man in the woods will, give, will accept. Well, they didn't have much choice at this point. So they said, Arthur said, very well. She said, but if I give you an answer, and if he accepts it, you must give me a boon. And Arthur said, very well, I will give you a boon. So they rode on, and sure enough, suddenly the fog cleared, lifted, and here was this giant of a man. And he said, do you have my answer? And Arthur said, I believe I do. And the giant man said, what was that? He said, what every woman wants in her marriage is to have choice to make her own decisions. And the man threw his club down. You've been talking to my sister! <laughs> <laughs> and she gave you that answer. And Arthur said, well, is it the answer you were looking for? And I said, very well. It right. was the answer I was looking for. I will not turn loose the magic of this forest upon Camelot. So Arthur and Gwen turned back and rode through the woods, and the lonely lady came out, stepped forward, and Arthur took her up behind him on his seat, and they rode back to Camelot, all three of them together. And as they went into court, the lady turned to Arthur and said, I, ask, I will ask my boon now that we are back in Camelot in front of all these witnesses. And he said, what is that? He said, she said, I wish to marry Sir Gawain. And Gawain was like, excuse me, lady, but did I hear you right? <laughs> I wish to marry Gawain this night. Arthur had no choice. He had given his word. Gawain had no choice. Choice. He was sworn to follow Arthur. So indeed, there was a great wedding ceremony that night. And everybody, after the ceremony and after the feast, paraded the new couple up to their rooms and left them. The loathly lady disappeared behind the bed curtains. Gwen disrobed. Was a shudder. <laughs> and he heard a voice come from behind the bed curtains. Are you not coming to bed, my love? And it seemed different. The voice seemed different. And he turned and he pulled. A beautiful woman was lying there with not very much clothing on in his <laughs> wedding bed. And he said, what is this? She said, I was under a curse. 
I appear during the day as a lovely lady, and at night I am my true self, the beautiful maiden you see here now. And he said, that's very nice, but you have to be the lovely lady during the day? She <laughs> said, yes. Unless I will give you, tell you what the curse says. I can be the lovely lady who nobody will want to approach, and my beautiful self in the evening and night will be our secret. Or I can be a beautiful lady during the day, and every man in the castle will want me. <laughs> and I can be a loathly lady at night in your bed. Going I will give you your choice. She said, the spell is broken. I will now be able to be your beautiful young wife all the time. <laughs> and I will also remain in our marriage and will always be your wife and be, and be good for you. So, another, a number of tales are told with, with endings. So, the thing out here is men. We must all give our ladies choice. If you ever happen to be a king and you're riding in the woods and you meet a giant of a man with a big club, just say no. <laughs>